Okay, it's that time of year again, and a new GoPro has been released, and in this case, it's the Hero 11 Black. Uh, let's take a look and see what's new. One of the principal new features of the Hero 11 is its new 8x7 sensor. Uh, this is taller than the sensors you found on previous cameras and it allows you to reframe your footage afterwards. So if you're outputting for social media in a vertical 9x16 format um, and you also need a 16.9 YouTube, it means you can reframe your footage without sacrificing any resolution. It makes it a whole lot more versatile. It also means that if you're shooting uh, quickly in an adventure environment, you can select this 8x7 format and not worry about locking in your look. So for example, if you uh, use features such as Super View for your uh, POV shots, and then you need to se select another mode for uh, a cinematic style establishing shot, th this doesn't matter anymore. You can now shoot in the 8x7 format and you can choose your reframing later on. This makes it really flexible and fast to work with. And I've got loads of flies around me for some reason. Uh, I must smell. <laughs> Where do these blooming flies come from? So the new 8x7 format makes things really easy to use and it means that you're not having to worry about uh, locking in your look or rushing to get the right uh, setting on the camera itself. Um, you can decide everything in post. Now obviously you can still you can still lock in your look in the camera if you want to and the new uh, taller sensor has allowed for a new mode called Hyperview which has been designed for POV style shots. It, it works in a very similar way to Superview by keeping the centre of the frame untouched while stretching out the sides of the image into a 16.9 uh, format and what this does is it gives you an um, effect of speed for example it's it's very much uh, designed for POV shots you wouldn't want to use it for general shots um, it's quite warped um, in its look um, so but it does give you a really uh, good wide angle of view and makes things look quite dynamic and probably makes you look better than you really are at the at the sport that you're doing it also allows new features such as 360 degree um, horizon leveling without the need for the max lens mod now the other big um, announcement when it came to the hero 11 uh, was a feature that has been requested for so long and that's 10-bit color um, now for most users you if you're a casual user and you just you know take your video and you just you bung it out to youtube or social media straight away and you don't do much in the way of editing or grading 10-bit probably won't much make much difference to you but for power users and people who do grading and want to really push the image or they want to match the camera to um, another camera then 10-bit color is really gonna come into its own. The additional tonal range that you get with 10-bit color is substantial, and you'll notice it when you're uh, bringing highlights down or adding contrast back in there um, and really pushing pushing things in the look. Um, you'll really see a difference in, in uh, in, in the quality of the image. 8-bit um, falls apart quite quickly if you push in this way and in the testing that I've done with the Hero 11 uh, the differences are quite noticeable. Did I just... A bird just pooed next to me. I'm doing really, I'm doing really well today. Now I have seen comments on Facebook uh, suggesting that with a small sensor like you find on this camera that 10-bit colour doesn't really have many advantages. It does, it's, it's, it's a big difference um, and you will really see it if you are pushing those grades um, and it's very welcome. Uh, the other thing is that 10-bit color on the Hero 11 makes the flat or log mode much more useful as well. Uh, previously, I stayed away from using these, these modes on action cameras because of the 8-bit recording and the highly compressed nature um, of the footage. So I tended to try and maximize my tonal uh, capture 
um, at the time of shooting and uh, I stayed away from uh, those modes. But on the Hero 11, um, it's finally uh, much more usable um, and much more practical um, in terms of what you actually get when it comes to your grading. So 10-bit doesn't work in all modes. Um, if you're shooting ultra slow motion, 120 frames per second or above, um, you won't be able to use a 10-bit color, but it does work up to 60 frames per second. Now the Hero 11 um, has a higher bit rate um, than previous cameras. They've bumped it up to 120 megabits per second, um, and that's useful given the new 10-bit uh, recording. If you still find that too low, however, you can install the Labs firmware onto the camera, and with that, you can increase the bit rate up to 200 megabits per second. The Hero 11 only records to HEVC or H.265. Um, there is no uh, H.264. 264 option available on the Hero 11. It's HEVC -E -E only. Get that right. Now another advantage of having 10-bit recording, uh, particularly if you're using the 8x7 mode um, in 5.3K, is that you can pull 24 megapixel images off your video and that's going to be 10-bit color. That's not quite as good as RAW but it's still better than an 8-bit JPEG stills uh, image. So um, it actually makes the stills mode on the camera a bit more redundant. It doesn't, it doesn't replace it completely because, you know, you will obviously get high quality if you take dedicated stills uh, with this camera in the raw mode. And super photo mo mode actually does uh, work really well. It produces a nice result, particularly if you have nice bright sunshine. But as I say, the ability to pull 24 megapixel stills straight off the video that's been recorded at 30 frames per second, that's that's neat. That's a really neat function to have. Uh, now, battery life on the Hero 11, I found it to be very similar to the Hero 10 when you put the Enduro battery in. Uh, the Hero 11 only comes with the uh, Enduro battery, and from what I can tell, it looks like GoPro may have discontinued the old battery that used to come with the Hero 9 and 10 and just gone for all Enduro. Um, it, it makes a big difference to the recording. I've noticed that when I've uh, run this camera right the way down, it's gone all the way down uh, to effectively zero on, on the percentage uh, meter. Uh, whereas, you know, with the old battery, you used to sometimes get cut out at around 20 or 30%. Um, so, you know, the Enduro battery is definitely uh, worth having. And, and from what I can tell, it's the only battery that is now available for the Hero 10 and 11. Um, I'm not sure whether uh, GoPro has replaced uh, the Hero 10 package with the Enduro because you can still buy the Hero 10. Um, but if you do buy that camera, then I would definitely recommend getting the Enduro battery if you haven't already. Um, it makes a big difference to the recording times, particularly in cold weather. Um, but it also uh, makes the slow motion modes uh, much more durable as well. On the thermal front, the, my opinion is that when this camera is used for the purposes that it is intended, there's no thermal problems at all. Uh, in 120 frames per second, yes, the camera is gonna get very hot, but you're not going to need to record hours of footage in 120 frames per second. If you are, I would really love to know what on earth you're filming with it. Um, most normal people do not need hours and hours of 120 frames per second footage um, for slow motion. You, you just don't need it. Um, so in my, uh, my opinion, uh, the thermal shutdown of these cameras is, is not a problem. And in any case, um, there are regulations with how hot a device can become before it has to shut down. Um, you know, there are EU regulations on this and the shutdowns on, this, on cameras like this um, are not necessarily down to the fact that um, it can't go any longer, but it's maybe down to the regulation that the device can only reach a certain external temperature um, to prevent burning the, per the, the owner. Um, so, um, so in general, you know, I don't think that the thermal issues are a problem in everyday use as you would be using a, a camera like this for. It's just not an issue. I found the Hero 11 to be very reliable in use. I haven't had any issues at all with it. Um, I've had no shutdowns and, you know, in general, a lot of shutdowns or lockups that people have had in the past have been down to the SD card. Make sure you have a very good SD card for it um, and make sure you format it correctly as well. Um, and you should minimize any, any trouble, but I haven't had any problems with uh, reliability with this camera so far. Um, its interface works really nicely. It's really smooth and responsive. So who is the Hero 11 suitable for? 
if you have the Hero 10, do you need to upgrade? Well, no. The Hero 10 is an absolutely fantastic action camera. People who will get the most out of the Hero 11 are power users. People who really want to match the GoPro to another camera, they really want to push the grade, or it might be your first action camera. And if you want the very best um, on the market so far, the Hero 11 would be a really great starting point for that. So if you have the Hero 10, um, then you know your mileage may vary. If you're a power user, then yes, you might want to upgrade. Certainly if you have one of the older cameras, like the Hero 4, I know some people who are still using the Hero 4, 4, 5, 6, 7, and even 8, and perhaps even the 9, um, then the Hero 11 will be uh, quite a large upgrade. Certainly from the Hero 9, it's a lot smoother in operation, the interface is much better, um, and you have many more modes and resolutions available to you from the cameras previous to that. So, you know, for older cameras, then yeah, Yes, uh, the Hero 11 is definitely uh, worth that upgrade if you are, you know, a serious action camera user and you do adventure sports and, you know, you're using the camera all the time. Um, for more casual users, you know, you want to make sure that you are going to be needing the functionality that the Hero 11 brings. Um, but yeah, if you are old, using one of the older cameras and you do like getting lots of footage, then yeah, I would recommend the Hero 11 uh, quite wholeheartedly. And certainly if you, as I say, if you're a power user and you uh, do a lot of grading, then the Hero 11 is definitely worth your time. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for putting your muddy paws all over my phone screen. Yeah.